Hello, my name is Adam, and today we're going to go over some practice problems using the density equation. The density equation is density equals mass over volume. So we can use this equation when we have an unknown metal and we want to determine what it is. So it's, say we have an object that we think is gold, but we're not sure. So we'll look up the density of gold, and then we also think it could be fool's gold, which is pyrite, so we'll look up that density too. The density of gold is 19.3 grams per milliliter. And the density of pyrite is 4.8 grams per milliliter. So now we determine what the density of our object is by calculating the mass and the volume. And then we can see which one of these it's closest to. So we'll determine the mass by putting it on a scale and weighing it. And we find that the mass is equal to 1,119 grams. And we'll determine the volume by placing our unknown object into a beaker of water. The initial volume of this beaker is 100 milliliters. After we add our unknown object, the final volume is 158 milliliters. So that tells us that the difference between these two has to be the volume of our object. So the volume of our object is 58 milliliters. So now we have the volume and the density, which we can plug into our density equation and then compare that back to our known values. So we divide 1,119 grams divided by 58 milliliters. And that gives us a density that rounds to 19 grams per milliliter. So we determined that it rounds to 19, point, 19 grams per milliliter, and that's closest to our gold density, so we conclude that our object is in fact gold. Next, we're going to use our density equation in a different way. So now we're going to use our density equation to solve for the mass of something. We might want to do this because the scale in our lab is broken or for another reason we don't have a scale, but we know the identity of our object and we can calculate the volume. So in this case, we have aluminum. And we know the density of aluminum is equal to 2.7 grams per milliliter. And we can calculate the volume like how we did in the last problem. We're going to put it into a container of water and measure the volume change. So the initial volume, once again, is 100 milliliters. We add our object and the final volume is 110 milliliters. Um, so then the difference between these two is 10 milliliters, so that's the volume of our aluminum block. We can then use these two variables to solve for our mass. But first, we have to rearrange the equation. We'll do this by multiplying both sides by V. When we do this, these two cancel out, so we get mass by itself. So we have volume times density equals mass. And we've just determined that the volume is 10 milliliters. And the density we looked up is 2.7 grams Per milliliter. So that tells us that the mass of our object is 27 grams. Alright, so this is how we can use this equation to solve for a mass when we don't have a mass and don't have any other way to figure it out. Next, we're going to use this equation to solve for the volume when we can figure out the mass and know the density. Once again, we need to rearrange our equation that we started with, which is mass over volume. We'll start by multiplying both sides by volume. This gives us volume times density equals mass. And then to get volume by itself, we'll divide both sides by volume. Or, sorry, excuse me, by density. This cancels out density on this side and gives us Volume equals mass over, over density. So now 
we're going to determine the volume, and our object that we have is iron. So we know the density of iron is 7.8 grams per milliliter. And we put this object, this iron object, onto a scale and determine that the mass is equal to 92 grams. So we can plug these two things into our density equation, which is now solving for volume, and determine the volume. So 92 grams divided by 7.8 grams per milliliter tells us that our final volume is 12 milliliters. All right, so this shows us how we can use the density equation to solve for volume, and in the last problem we saw we can solve for mass, and the first problem we saw we can solve for density using this equation. So I hope you've learned more about how to use this equation, and I hope you have a good day. Thank you.